Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today Dup Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1948 Ford cab over truck running. That's right. Another flathead. Well, we got this thing thawed out, so uh, let's do a walk around of it now. First thing I want to do is cut this bed. Must have had some type of flat bed on it. I don't know what these timbers are. Like a three by eight or something. They're freaking huge and uh, might need them for a project someday. So we're going to cut those off. And plus it sticks past the back of the frame here and uh, likes to rip your manhood off every time you walk by. So that's got to go. Right, Duff? Yeah, that's going to go. Found some tires for it. They're eight and a quarter 20s. I don't know what these are, but they look a lot bigger. Partly because they hold air, kind of. So you gotta get those swapped on here. Looks like it's got a great big ugly banjo rear end, like these things have. It's probably got some like 513s or 632 gears. You know, real stump pullers. What are these May Pops? Duff, should we get crazy and try to put air in them? No, that wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, we'll do it. They're Firestones, they're gum dipped. They're 750 20s, that's right. We're riding on 20s, how about that? How about that? It does have an auxiliary transmission back here, so I don't know if it's got like a four and a four, a four and a three. Duff, Duff says a four and a three, I don't know. No two speeder end, so I don't know if that was an underdrive or an overdrive or how that works. Remember my grandpa calling these things brownie transmissions? I don't know. Basically just an auxiliary transmission behind the back so you can split the gears more ways. I don't know if you can get overdrive or... I suppose you could, you could probably do whatever you wanted if you got the right one. Look at how good this thing is. Back of the cab, super nice. Does have a little bit of rust there. Not bad. Doors are super solid. One little dent there. A little dent on this lower lip on the running board. Should be pretty easy to work out. Can't get this door open, so... That'll be one of the first steps because the engine is pretty much in the cab. So in order to work on it, try to get this flathead running, we're gonna have to get that door open. You wanna take care of that? I'll finish doing the walk around. These are a 10 hole bud wheel, they call them. Uh, even though they're only a five hole. I got some wheels off a 53 Ford F500 that we got with another 54 Ford cab over. And we're gonna throw those on here because obviously these tires are not good on my floor. Hopefully we can get him to roll too. Easier to push around. Then uh, maybe if Puddin buys it, he can shove it around with his toe roll. 48, I guess, is the only year you could get the stainless grill bars in these things. Well, and they all had them. And then everything was like painted, what, argent or silver or white, whatever after that. This is what they told me on the internet, I don't know. Can't believe everything you read on the internet, right, Abraham Lincoln? And then I don't know if they all had this chrome strip in the middle or not. I'm not an expert. I don't believe the uh, pickups had these. Again, not an expert. Not much to see under there. Basically, you got your oil bath air cleaner, voltage regulator, canister type oil filter, and uh, top off your coolant. So you could uh, do your regular checks up here. I don't even know if you could get to the dipstick if you had to. Probably not. Probably not. It looks like it's got 1980 license plates. I think they use these for a couple years, so it could maybe have like, you know, 81 or two tags. So let's just say it's been off the road for 40 years. Bumper's pretty good, even. One little hooey in there where somebody wrapped the chain around it. Wasn't me. Six volt bulbs are still in it. Oh, look at this gem. Got ourselves a new Sun tune-up machine. And this thing come with, I don't know, like five timing lights. Yeah, because we use timing lights all the time. But look at this thing. We gotta get something running and figure out how to use the Champion plug scope. Tells you if, if you got new spark plugs, satisfactory, or unsatisfactory spark plugs. I have never heard of such a thing, and I am intrigued. But Watch West Work doesn't have one of those. So many timing lights. One, two, three, four, 
and the plug scope and some other adapters. Ooh, got ourselves a new Harbor Freight floor jack early Christmas. Present to myself. Don't worry, you got plenty of treats too, didn't you? Really, I just wanted this thing for the cabinet, but it's all in pretty good shape, so I don't know. Looks like we can do uh, test the condenser or test ohms, dwell, black magic. I think that's kind of like the old snap on analoscope. Combustion efficiency, I don't know what that is. Cylinder leakage, measure vacuum, and the electro power balance. No idea what that means. It also came with all the manuals too. Didn't it, Duff? Oh, where are they at? What is, what is this? Is this advertising? Oh my gosh, we gotta open this up. Some of the rest. Oh, that's pretty freaking neat there. How neat is that? How neat is that? Well, then we had some wall space to hang stuff around here. I shouldn't have stuff like this. This should go to some professional or somebody who's clean and organized. Oh, it's a Sun battery charger. I actually have that same battery charger. Test sheets, I'm guessing. Maybe? Oh, yeah. Fuel pump tester. Battery starter tester, tune-up specifications, 67 to 76, 1959 specifications, automotive test procedure manual. All kinds of stuff we're never going to use. All right, we got to get back to uh, working on a cab over. Still not quite as cool as the distributor machine. So apparently she was a... Uh, 16,000 GVW rig at one time. I'm guessing that's where the battery goes. There's supposed to be a cover and a step that goes there. This cab corner is a little worse, a little rot in the door. Seats are wasted. Just springs. The doghouse cover is in there. This door doesn't latch, so I had her. Tarp strap shut. Didn't look like it had a radio. Maybe it had a heater, but that looks like it's gone. It's got the 8RT, which is pretty similar to the 8BA, which came in the cars. RT is just a truck engine. I don't know if anything internally is different on these 49 to 53 truck engines versus cars, but uh, the water pump mounting is different i know so i mean but basically you could put a car water pump on a truck engine or vice versa and they use the same holly 94 carburetor same generator yeah and i think the only thing different between the cab over engine and uh oh that's the other thing is the oil pans are a little bit different between truck engine and car engines so you know if it's correct yeah let's um try to get that door open over there floor pans are good there's uh some fecal matter going on over there Looks like she's pretty tight for your feet down there for the gas pedal. Once the old dog hose is in there, we'll probably take that out. Let's, let's get those tires on first. So we don't have to trip over those. Cut this bed off and then get the door open. So much to do. Duff, what are you gonna do? You uh, gonna eat some chow or have a nap, huh? Okay, I guess I'll just do it all. Not even the tires. I don't know that you need thumbs to mount the tires up. Run around the torch, cutoff wheel. We're gonna have to get the big jack. I don't think the old one and a half ton is gonna be very happy with the cab over. All right, let's put some wheels on it, at least on the front. Those look like they're holding there. Back at her, done with the walk around. Sorry about the uh, interruption with the uh, sun tester. I don't know why I have this thing. It's probably gonna get thrown away by somebody else, so I had to save it. What are the odds these things take air? Pretty slim to none. Nothing. Oh my goodness. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Scared Duff. That's a big bang, huh? Woo! I'm gonna have to go get some new shorts. Pepper needs new shorts! Oh. 
and uh, get my hearing checked. That was crazy, huh? Yeah, we're not even gonna try this one. Or that one. That's the loudest thing I've heard in a long time. It's the first time I've had that happen in quite a while. Way better. 750 versus an eight and a quarter. Really fills out that wheel well. This looks like a real truck now. Left hand thread. Turn up. There you go, inch and a half socket. The BDBH Milwaukee here. 10 lug nuts later and a couple of scabby wheels. This thing is that much closer to rolling. It looks a lot better too. Mucho better roll. Now we should do the rears. So for those of you that aren't familiar with a bud style wheel, these are the nuts I just took off. Left hand thread, of course. Ford did silly things like that too. Or maybe it's just a truck thing. So you take this nut off to get the outside dual off. And then this stud, this is a 13 16 square. And you need a tool for taking these off. Well, it's a bud wheel socket, I guess, what they call it. And uh, well, that one came loose. We don't have six wheels, so we're not gonna take those off, and our outside duals, eight and quarters, are taller than these, so we're gonna have training wheels. But, so there's a socket that you need to take these off, and I don't have that. I got one on order, so for the next time, that'll probably never happen. But yeah, there's your uh, worthless information of the day from Mortsky Repair. Bud wheel studs, so these just thread off. And you can take this wheel off, but we're leaving her for now. Gum dipped. Firestone was pretty proud of that back in the day. Heavy duty truck and bus. Eight ply rating. Pretty funny with the uh, training wheels that are inch and a half taller than the insides, but at least it'll roll now. Probably. Try anyway. Is this thing got hydraulic brakes? Oh yeah, definitely should. 39 I think was first year on trucks as well. Let's uh, dress this wood. I'm thinking just leave it on there for now but trim it up because it's shot back here anyway and I'm sick of getting poked every time I walk around it. This thing's too big for the shop. Before we do that, let's step back and just, just take a look and admire what we got going on here. That thing looks freaking mean now. I don't know, oh boy. We'll have to watch going out because it was close coming in with those flat, smaller tires. Now with bigger aired up tires, there ain't a whole lot of room between the roof and obviously the door hangs lower than the roof so hopefully I film that because that might be interesting if I forget about it cool I wonder if you could bring back some shine to this paint if a guy rubbed on her a bit obviously it's pretty thin in spots I've kind of always wondered you know that's what it was looking like why this fender's gray if that was a replacement fender because you can see there's some red there and there was red on the inside like this was a new old stock fender that was replaced back in the day so it's got a different primer on it 
I thought right away when I got it that somebody sand, started sanding it down. It really irritated me. I was like, I don't want to buy a pickup somebody's molested. But I think that fender's just a new old stock replacement from back in the day that got painted. Not quite as good. Look at how straight these things are. They get rusty here in the pickups. That, and the truck's not as bad, but there's like a ledge in there and dirt sits. But, I mean, there isn't even a ding. Oh, there's one little scratch in the stainless there. Oh, there's another one there. But, I mean, that grill's pretty dang nice. Hood's nice. This fender, there's one little crease there. Easy to get at from the inside. You can tap that out pretty easy. That's why I picked this thing up. Well, not why, but that's why I paid real money for this thing, because this thing is way good. Sheet metal wise, way good. It's got the usual stuff. But. All right, I'm gonna trim some wood off, and we gotta get a door open. And maybe, before we figure out how to get that door open, let's figure out how to get this one to latch, and that might uh, teach us something about how these doors get stuck. Oh yeah, that's the one bad thing about this thing. She's got a little rust above the windshield, so it needs a new panel up there, and there is a little rust coming through on the outside. I did notice that today when I was looking at it. That kind of sucks. But, whatever. You're not gonna find a better truck up here anyway. In the south, yeah. So what happens there is the mice go up and they get in the top there and they make their little mousy houses. And uh, they do their little mousy pee pee dance. And that rots out that area above the windshield. Frickin' fivel. God damn. Yeah, that irritates me. It's really not fun to fix either. So there's that. There's a little dent there. How's the rough? Usually the roughs I always get. Oh yeah, somebody jumped on her one time putting a tarp on it. So these trucks, they would haul grain in them, and if it sat overnight and it was going to rain or there was going to be a dew, they would put a tarp over their grain. So a lot of times they would climb up the steps, and then they would climb on top of the cab to get up here to tarp their grain. But I think that one would pop out pretty easy. There's another one over there, but pretty good for being... What is this thing? 73 years old? Wow. Just reaching full retirement here. Okay, saws all time. I took those cross plates off because, I don't know, that one was just kind of hanging there and it just irritated me. You know, all about the uh, curb appeal. I got a mess to clean up. Don't worry, Greta. We'll dispose of these tires and everything else responsibly. How dare you! All right, let's mess with the door now. So the way these things latch is they're just, I don't know, it's what do you call it? A stri striker? No, that's on the other side. Anyway, this thing slides in and out. Catches on these two tangs here. Pudding tangs. That's your uh, first catch, your safety catch, and that's your main catch. I don't know. Let's spray some Keith Benoit Croil on there and see what happens. Let me get a hammer. Give her a few tap, tap, tap a -roos. Just tap it in. Tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. Oh, she is stiff as a brick, in the words of ACDC. Oh, for Pete's sake. I wonder if we take that access panel off and we can get in there and work her back and forth a bit. Yeah, let's open her up before we spend something. So really can't see anything in here, so we're just gonna take it apart and then uh, move it up. You know what's gonna happen? We're gonna try to take these flat screws out and they're not gonna go. That's what's gonna happen. 
and then I'm going to get angry, and then we're going to throw heat at it and screw up the paint. It's red. I don't like red paint anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna hit that one a little bit too hard. Shoot! We were down to the last one too. Why am I fixing the door latch? I don't even know if the engine's gonna run. I guess I'm sick of seeing this door flopping in the wind out there. And everybody has to drive by and ask if this thing's for sale. And I said, yeah, go take a look. And they go and wrench on the door, pry that tarp strap out of there, and then they don't hook it back up. People these days. Looks like we gotta get the outside door handle off in order to get the mechanism out. And there's one Phillips screw right in here. At least it's Phillips. We gotta get that off to get the handle off. Well, that's not going as planned, so we're getting the locking players out. I think we didn't clean up our mess. Got this little chunk of wood to keep me from scratching up the edge of the door here. Maybe. Try that out. Oh! Woohoo! Now we just shut it and never ever open it again. Well, see what happens. Moment of truth. Here goes nothing. Well, it latches. Sure hope it opens again. Well, actually, it's coming back out on its own, but it'll work for what we got to do. I'm just going to take your locking players with. A little rusty in there. Hopefully, the croil takes care of it. We got to get the other side open. Let's take the doghouse out of here. Did somebody say doghouse? Oh. So that's basically the engine cover. They call it a doghouse. Like I said, it goes sitting outside or sitting upside down or sitting in the dirt. Rotted it out a bit. That's too bad. Boy, that is a big, ugly piece. Not nearly as cool as your doghouse, huh, Duff? Let's probably stick this panel back on before it loses screws, too. Oh, look, the other side's already taken apart. Because clearly there was issues before. Or maybe that's, they took it apart to put a window in that they never got done. Man, I bet these seats were even in their prime. Can you imagine bouncing across the country on that thing? Looks like that side does have a coil spring underneath it and some type of shock absorber on the back there. Let me get the door open, we'll take a look at it. If I remember. Plush, nothing but the finest, 1948 for Ford. Take all our tools over to the other side, so we can't make a mess of that, too. So somebody's been prying on this handle already. And that's just like a square shaft that goes in there, and you'll put a twist in those if you pry them too hard. So, I don't know what to do here. 
without screwing it up anymore. Maybe that's why they parked it. Door got stuck 40 years ago. We go to the inside, see if we can't get it in there maybe. Worth a shot. All right. So we want this rod to slide in. And this lever should be going up, so we should be able to pull. That sounds good. Again, this is on a hex shaft too. And more damage there. Things are not going well. I don't want to hose up this door either because this is a good door. Driver's doors are always in worse shape. This door is nice. So I had an Tiffany. What if we can just sneak a chisel or something in there? and pry that thing back, punch it back, push it back. The striker, gosh dang it. Latch. Yeah, that was a good a Tiffany. She's a nice gal. You know what's not nice? These springs. Oh hey look, there's the door panel cover, sweet. Your worthless information for the day, these Fords come with a factory toolbox. Because they broke down so much. Here's our uh, three-speed, well, it's probably a four, actually. Maybe it is only three. Nope, she's a four. And this is our uh, brownie transmission. You could tell it's added on by the way that the hole is uh, in the floor. Uh, it looks like they cut it with a dull chisel. That's how we got holes in the Midwest. Firewalls, floors, didn't matter. Dull chisels. Yeah, nobody owned a tin snip or a hole saw. If you were lucky, they... Oh, no, that was a torch. Yep, definitely a torch. All right. Oh, the nice part, though, is that's a bolt-in piece. So we can take that out, doctor it up if we needed to. All right, back to door latches. Oh, the seat is so bad. License plate light. They use the same Model A tail light basically or 33 4 Ford well into the 50s could work for same tail light for 30 years this be our rear license plate sure enough 81 tags on it so 40 years this son of a biscuit's been parked or last driven on the road oh my gosh this Here's our striker, latch, whatever. Frick, well, that was easy. That was easy. Well, we just kind of looby doob that one up. Hopefully all that poopy sitting down there didn't rot off the bottom of that door. At least it's on the inside. Oh, it's got holes for it, but they were never drilled out. They're just kind of punched. Only had the single visor. Yeah, look at how bad that freaking mouse house is. Wouldn't take much to pop the windshield out. Dang it. Freaking five -o. Like I said, the inside's easy to do. You just find a good one of these, just pop it in. You only got to seam a little bit on the edges here, but it's the outside part that you got to do a good job of hiding. I hate when that happens. So if anybody's got a good header panel for 4852 Ford, hit me up. I could use one. Yeah, they reproduce them, who knows? Oh, duff. If you weren't so tuckered out, you'd check out all this poopy in here. Maybe I'll save some for you to roll in. Ew. And here's the uh, seat suspension. It's got a big old coil spring under here. And a shock absorber there mounted upside down. Couple more pivot points back here. Yeah, this must have been a factory deal. You can adjust your 
spring tension height maybe i don't know i don't think there was any fore and aft adjustment so if you're tall like me you're in trouble how many miles on this thing Twenty thousand. you know what i bet that's original looking at these pedal pads and how nice this thing is no way this thing's got 120 that would be freaking worn out i mean maybe it has like 60 on it and uh the speedometer broke that could be oh i didn't even notice the uh spotlight is it a guide oh yeah guide s6 oh she's got a little whiskey dent in the top that's for checking the cows at the truck oh yeah freaking poop Seems pretty solid, but she's probably pitted. Hopefully not a bunch of crap got in here. When the cover, oh yeah, of course it did. Yeah, let's clean that out. Keep this nice door nice. Where's what's left of the seat foam? Surprises like this aren't good. I don't like surprises. There's never good surprises around here. Are they, Duff? It appears as a small hole about three fingers wide has developed in the bottom of the door now. Ugh. I just can't win. Overall, still pretty decent. Let's uh, address this guy here. I think we're just gonna do our same thing. Lube her up a bit and uh, start working her back and forth. All right, I'm sick of doors and latches. Let's, uh, let's do flathead stuff. So we don't have any keys. This will be the push starter. Uh, it usually runs off of a ground, because these are positive ground. Six volt system, that's frozen up. So we're gonna have to do some bypassing. I wonder how much crud this thing drank over the years. Let me try the linkage. Usually I don't like when they're sitting open like this. I, I don't like when their carburetors are open like that. I like when they have an air cleaner on them. But the other thing I just noticed, like, wow, it's inside, so it shouldn't have been an issue. But I wonder how much water ran from there straight down the dash into that carburetor. Yuck. All right, let's see if the throttle's froze up. It's got to be, though, for sure. Uh... Yep, most definitely. Wow, what a wild linkage. Comes out the gas pedal, goes to the floor, back to a pivot, back over here to the engine, pivot across here, another lever, back to a linkage. Wild. All right. Where is the dipstick at? Bet you thought I was gonna say, where's the dipstick, Jimmy? I didn't. We're not even gonna show the clip. Dipstick! So, dipstick, where are you? I bet the Cyclops can find it. This is miserable. There it is. Any bets? How are you ever gonna check around this thing? Way down here. I don't even know I'm gonna get that out of there. You go through the wheel well? No getting it through there. I don't even think I can reach back there. Much less if you got it out, how would you ever get it back in? Is there an access to the floor? Oh, there is. I've never seen a dipstick access before. I'm gonna sweep this crud up. So Duff's got something to roll in. And we'll get the uh, dipstick access door out. Oh, this, is, this is a nice surprise. Exciting. All right, let's check that uh, dipstick out. Any bets? I'm betting it's over full with water. I don't know, I haven't been checked in a while. I have a feeling. Oh, 
she's stuck in there. There we go. Oh no. Well, there's no oil on it. There's a whole lot of condensation. So that ain't good for business. I'll just put that back in there and pretend like it's fine. So I guess pull the spark plugs, hook a battery up, see if it turns. I don't think I can grab the fan from under the hood. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's uh, ergonomically impossible for me to get in there and try that. But we'll do it anyway, just for you guys. Not a place you want to be if you're claustrophobic. Oh, these big doll tires, it's so hard to get up in here now. I don't know where I'm gonna all right, here goes nothing. Uh, yeah, not going. Let's pull the spark plugs out. See what we can see in there. Maybe put some looby doob in there. Yeah. Let's just get out of here. Oh, look, the door spring. So this is the spring that goes on the back side of these handles. So every time you're at a car show and you see a guy with a really nice painted car and his handles are sitting like that, instead of sitting horizontal, it's because that spring's busted. More worthless knowledge for you. They're kind of a bugger to put in. Probably why nobody ever fixes them. Let's blow the credit card out of the spark plug hole so that we don't get that into our stuck cylinders. You know, being responsible here. What is this? They were uh, using some baling twine tied to the throttle to drive this thing by hand. Well, oh, that makes me feel better. There's clearly some issues before they parked it. I don't know how everybody gets so butthurt when I pull spark plugs out with a drill. Works just fine. You. Look at the bottom of that plug. So that thing's had a lot of something in it, fluid, but it wasn't fuel or oil. That one also looks pretty terrible. You know, compared to the others, that one actually looks respectable. This thing has drank a lot of water. These poor old Champion H10s. I guess let's go to the other side. I know exactly how those are gonna go too. Got all the plugs out of that side. Did notice that the uh, mice got into the bottom of the dash and rusted that out. You know, if we just could eradicate mice, that'd be great for all my old car hobbies. Spark plugs on that side. All looked about the same, except for the front one looked really, really good. We're calling it a night. Sprayed a bunch of croil down the spark plug holes. So, can't hurt, right? But I just, uh, I feel like we're going to be pulling the head off this thing. Or probably both, the way things look. I don't know how it could be that sludgy in there. It is what it is. All right. I'm going to have a sandwich collar night. Old Duff, he's already punched out. Dreaming of raw hides. Well, we got a guy coming to do some windshields today, so this thing's got to go outside. So let's see if she fits. Oh, yeah. We had inches to spare. Well, since that flat, it's probably not gonna run. Just kidding, it's gonna run. We'll give you guys a cold start. I'm gonna put a windshield in the old K20 Custom Deluxe. Look at that bedside. Whew, that's professional work. Come on, never start battery, be strong. You can't drive a manual. And dead. So much for the cold start. Son of a biscuit. Got the booster pack hooked up, got some sparkage, so uh, okay, 
Yeah, I know you're excited for the big red Clifford, the big red pooch. And nothing. Yeah, we're gonna have to swap a battery in. You gotta do that right on my front seat? Come on now. What do you think? We got the Florida Man battery in there, is it gonna go now? I think so. Just have to give the old quadrant head a few pumpy dumps. Just kidding, nothing. Oh crap, I forgot this thing has the uh, messed up clutch switch. But that battery was just fine. Just gotta have the pedal not quite to the floor. Several eternities of pumping later. Is it gonna idle even? Kind of. There you go, you guys got a cold start, even though it's like 36 degrees today. Which is tropical. For Podunk. goes first. Get some R's up. Oh, this thing just walks through the snow. So if you want to go uh, open the shop door, that'd be great. Four-wheel drive works. We have to test it in the video. All right, open the door. We got the cab over back in here, and Duff says, "In all my infinite wisdom, we should uh, throw a battery in see if it cranks over." Well, I can tell you how that's gonna go. Getting the battery in isn't gonna be fun. Getting it to try to turn over isn't gonna be fun. And most importantly, Duff, it's not going to turn over. He says, prove me wrong. So, battery must go under here, because the cables are the dead giveaway. Are they not? Good, sir. Oh, yeah. So I followed the cables up. I thought the solenoid would be on the firewall. Ford likes to do that. There it is, up there. So this being a 6-volt system, we're going to hook it up 12 volts. It'll be fine. Oh, is this one of them neat? Oh, look at that. We don't even need a loser switch. It's got the little press button right at the bottom of the starter solenoid. That is one neat thing. I don't know if that's a factory Ford deal or what, but... So really, we should just be able to press that. I don't know if that'll work when we hook it up 12 volts, but... We're gonna give it a shot. I think so, because it just completes the circuit from there to there. Oh, super excited. Don't need the loser switch. Fords have built-in loser switches. How exciting is that, Duff? Oh, you found the glory hole right here. All right, too far. Back to work. I don't know what held that battery. Probably just hung by the cables. Who wants me to pet them? Who wants me to pet them? Okay. Let's go get our uh, battery. Who's our battery sponsor this week? Oh, looks like Nancy is holding strong. This battery, she's been around a while. All right, slider in there. Speaking of battery sponsors, you know what Nancy also is? A Duff Approved member. You wanna go check that out down below for some behind the scenes actions, all the cool stuff that Duff does when I'm not recording for him. When he's not recording me, I don't know. But yeah, I've been doing a lot of cold start stuff, playing around in the snow, shoving stuff around with the skid steer in the snow, stuff that's way cooler than Torolas. So check that out down below. Support Duff's rawhide addiction. Do we need to get you some flea and tick medicine? No, oh, you're just itchy. You wanna slide that in? That'd be great. No thumbs required. All right, I'll do it. All right. That one's gonna be our ground. Oh, guess we'll get an end for that. While we're at it, we might as well put an end on this one, huh? Or is that gonna tighten up? Come on now. Get on in there. Putting these replacement battery cable ends on just for Wes. He loves these things like I love flexi hoses. 
Oh yeah. Just kidding, I can't get this on there. And let's stick a wire through my thumb. Go to your home. Don't you know where your home is? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! See, these things get this little nub that goes up. You flip them upside down and you get way more bite. It's kind of like putting your air cleaner on upside down. Air cleaner lid anyway. On your quadder bog. Gives you all the horsepower. This just gives you all the electrical power. Wessel like that. If you ain't got one of these neat battery cable end spreaders, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty nifty. They work handy for dumb stuff like this. All right, I'm gonna hit the solenoid. You guys watch the fan. Well, let's see if it even makes a clunk noise. All right, where's the nipple? Starter's trying. You guys are gonna have to tell me what the fan's doing. Can you see the tip of the fan blade right by the tip of my finger? Yeah, that's right, those two have met before. Not this fan and not this finger, but let's not talk about that. I'm hit the switch. You guys let me know what kind of disappointment you see. As expected, a whole lot of disappointment. We know the starter works, you know. We always uh, like when we don't have to tear a starter apart. A lot easier to replace a starter than it is to pull ahead on a stuck engine, but. I think the driver's side is worse, both internally and to get the head off, so we're gonna go ahead and take the passenger side off. Before we pull that head off, we're gonna pull this seat off because Duff is not gonna sit on that if we get it running. And you know, that's the end game, taking Duff for a ride. We'll have to put something in here because with him sitting down here, he doesn't gonna be able to see up out of the window. So I'm gonna put a red square body bench in there, a five gallon bucket, maybe a lazy boy. But let's get this one out of there so that we can get in there and uh, get that head off. The old 8RT. I like prying on the flywheels better than the end of the crankshaft, cause yeah, we've seen what happens there. Oh yeah! Oh no. But there's no really inspection cover. I mean, we could take the starter out, but you can't get a good bite on the flywheel. And we know there's a whole bunch of crud in there that we gotta get out. So we're gonna pull that head off. And see what is the disappointment that is Ford Flathead. Just kidding, happy Mordski. I'm sure everything's gonna be great and grand and good inside there. I can't wait. We didn't find the battery tray though. Normally I would blow some crap off the head, but I think there's already more inside the engine than there is outside the engine. All right, fine, we'll blow it off anyway. Give the old workspace a quick cleaning. All right, let's get started. Truth. Well, I don't know what moment of truth, but let's see if it comes off. Oh, we're getting some water on and out. Tough sparking at the water. What's holding you on? Oh, it's stuck under the distributor hold down. Dirk a dirk. Dirk a dirk. 
silly Fords that they're distributing their hold downs in the head. Well, the good news is it's clean looking water. So, as you can tell, intake's open, full of water. Is that the only intake that's open? That's an exhaust. So like I said, most piss hole, rainwater, dash, rust, down the gullet, and into the hatch. Perfect. It wouldn't be so bad, but all the cylinders look pretty craptastic as well. Let's go fishing. Oh my. Water's not so clean anymore. I have muddied the waters, as they say. Uh, don't worry, that's just the top of the piston. Sure it ran when they parked it. Oh, thought that was another one of our valve heads coming off. Kind of is the valve head, just excess material on it. I don't know kids, this might be a lost cause. Look at all that material. Hew. I didn't even hardly touch it. And look at that. See, that's all material that's behind the valve. So even if we'd have got this thing loose, we, we couldn't get that out of there with completely tearing down, without completely tearing down the engine. And you see that little shiny gray spot in the middle? That's all that was holding this thing. It had just about rusted the whole way through, it appears. Either way, if I'd got that valve loose, all this stuff was going to be in the intake and causing us a whole lot of headache. So, uh, yeah. This flathead is not going to run. Dang it. That was a pretty nice clean break too. Let's get the water out of this cylinder, spray these all down with oil just in case somebody wants to use this someday. And then we're going to put a plastic bag over the carburetor or something to prevent further water intrusion. Dang it. Somebody's going to get, somebody's surely going to get mad that, oh, you shouldn't have pried on that valve. Yeah, well, I didn't hardly pry on it. And all that stuff behind there wasn't going to just clear itself out. And that valve was never going to seal up anyway. Look at all that stuff that's just caked on there that you can't even scratch off with a screwdriver or a bar. Yeah. Not good. a shame because there isn't much ring ridge. Everything else looked pretty good. The valves look terrible. This thing would need a valve job at a minimum. It does have the factory Ford intake and exhaust valves, so I bet it's a standard bore. I don't see a mark on the piston. Somebody could have gone through it and put Ford valves back into it, but yeah. The seats were gonna be all chewed up in these. Gonna need guides. We'll stick her back together. Next guy can address this scenario. Duff, how's the inside of the head look? Just a little chewy. Okay, a lot of chewy. All right, let's scrape some of that out before we slide her back in. Good as new. I was just looking on the head and you can see the Ford logo on the head gasket. Right there. So it's most rebuilt by a Ford dealer 
So was ever rebuilt, I'm guessing. Gotta pry that distributor up so I can sneak that past. And of course that's not wanting to go anywhere. Why do Ford distributors always get seized? We got our carburetor condom installed. Let's put that doghouse cover back on and that'll help the carburetor issue even more. Well, it's not really a carburetor issue. It's a water down the carburetor issue. <laughs> I'm going to finish blowing the crap out of this side and then we'll stick the seat back in. Got it pretty well cleaned out, put back together. Really, I think the only thing this thing's missing, I mean, that door panel over there is behind the seat. It's missing this step slash battery cover. So, somebody's got one of those, hit me up. This thing's pretty much cleaned up, ready to go for sale. <clears throat> but you know, we can't just leave the video right there. We gave it our best shot on this flathead. I know guys are gonna cuss me. Oh, you should have pulled the other head off and you could have bored it and done valves and so on and so forth but to be honest if i was gonna do this thing i already got one with a gas powered chevy in it if i were gonna do another one of these i'd put a like a oh, not even a 12 valve like a 24 valve cummins or a 6 7 cummins something diesel and then have a bed on the back for hauling junk right duff because these tires it needs tires it's gonna need brakes brakes are like unobtainium for these you got really slow gears, so on and so forth. They just need modern drivetrains. And I know everybody's gonna cuss me for putting a Cummins in one or a GM drivetrain in it, whatever. I don't care, whatever works. So long as, I mean, if you gotta have all Ford, then put a Power Stroke in it or a Coyote or whatever, so be it. But these flatheads, they're cool and like little hot rods, but 100 horsepower or 110 if you had a big Merc engine in one of these. Not a lot, pretty slow going, not Duff approved. So, unfortunately, this thing's not getting another flathead in it. Well, I own it, but you could own it. You saw how nice this thing is. If you want it, down below, send us an email or message us on Instagram, Mortsky Repair on Instagram, Mortsky Repair at gmail.com. If you want to email us, I think we're going to kick this one out of here. So, I told you guys I wouldn't leave you hanging. That's right, more cab over action. We picked up this 1954 Ford cab over on an online auction. She was frozen into the ground, had a cattle pot on the back, so the guy was nice enough to let us use his torch, cut her off, get her loaded up, and bring her home. Hopefully we got it. I don't know where all my help went. Oh yeah. Shoot, forgot the brake line and the taillight harness. Harry 
just the way I like them. We got her. Tied down. Hood latched. Well, at least it's on their backwards, so it shouldn't blow open. We got ratchet straps on the doors of both these heaps. This one was supposed to come with for the rear end. Um, just gonna take a shot in the dark and say that rear end's no good. I don't know what we're saving off this. There really ain't much there. Maybe a door. A couple of wheels. That's about it. So now that we gotta get home, we gotta make this thing roll so we can get it around easier. I don't know what to do about the front. I might cut the centers out of those wheels and graft them into some different wheels, but we'll see. Maybe we'll just take the tires off, but I don't have any rims that fit on this that are gonna roll. We got some off the other cab over, but they're all shot too. We don't wanna blow any more up in our face. These are tubeless and uh, yeah, we're not gonna get those to seat up. So we gotta figure that out. We gotta make the back end roll. Didn't want to waste a perfectly good rear end on this thing. So we got this front end out of a, I think it's a 90? Yeah, any 88 to 94 GM four wheel drive. So we'll have four wheel steering. And if we do get this thing to run, we can hook the drive shaft up to this and uh, we can drive it. Worst case scenario, we can just weld the steering straight. We'll probably have to weld the suspension solid because this thing's a torsion bar suspension, and our torsion bars are just kind of hanging out there, and they're probably going to get cut off too. The reason I use this is because it's going to scrap anyway. I had it around, and it's six lug wheels, which I have a stack of because it's four-wheel drive GM. We don't really do that many of those. I guess we did a four-wheel drive Blazer 76 back in the day, and I think we did that 77 Chevy half-ton four-wheel drive. We've done a couple of them, but... Anyway, I got a bunch of these wheels, and these later wheels have a whole bunch of positive offsets so they don't work on the square body pickups. So I figured that's a good spot to burn these up, burn that front end up, make this thing maybe roll, see what happens. So, I know, not one of my brighter ideas, but we'll see. I'm not really out anything other than a whole bunch of time, which we don't have a ton of. So, let's get after it. Well, we got that kind of rolling. Like I said, I think we're gonna have to cut those torsion bars off. Got that kind of leveled up. Duff is in his usual supervisory position. All right, let's keep rolling. So, uh, change of plans. We're not going back to back. We're going uh, butts to nuts here. That frame is 34 inches wide. This is significantly wider. And it gets down to like 32 inches here. So I'd have to do some math, figure out where to cut it. Or I'd have to weld like a C channel across there so it's wider to butt it up. But guess what? This is 34 inches wide up here. So we're just gonna spin it around, stab her up there, see what happens. Also, uh, I think my steering box got full of water, it froze up. I think the gearbox did too, or the differential, because uh, wheels don't want to turn real bad. So hopefully, when she thaws out in here, we'll get uh, some turnage, both in the steering and the wheels. Right, Duff? All the spots to sleep here, you gotta curl up on the floor over there. Silly boy. All right, back at her. Oh man, these ratchet straps, they're your best friend when you're a loser working by yourself. Or your right hand man doesn't have any thumbs. Anywho, yeah, that uh, lines up pretty good. We can burn that in. So I think we'll split her apart, clean it up. And then we'll have to do something for a gusset, you know, maybe from here to there. Otherwise she's gonna go, Aww. 
Kako right in half when we hit the first jump. This side, we might uh, trim that up a little bit. She's got a little banana cut there. Whoever cut that with a torch, not very straight. So, clean that up, and I think we'll try to let the cab down a little bit. Maybe get the bottoms a little bit more level. I don't know. See what happens. See what I feel like doing. I feel like not laying in this melted snow. Bet if we come back from lunchtime, it'll still be melted snow. Well, let's get this done. Whew. Yeah. Ran the guide spotlight into my copper pipe up here for it's my paint rack, my paint booth. Hang parts from that. Yeah, he never seen me do it because we don't paint much around here. Back at her. So we nip this little triangular gusset out of the back of the frame. Let's see if we can get her to fit up here. And dang it. Maybe it'll fit the other side. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. I think we got it. Look at that. Just slider in there. We'll clean that up a bit. Clean the top of the frame up a bit. Oh, that thing's going to be real good. We just got to cut one off this side, too. Just that easy. side a little bit bigger gap on that side yeah I didn't uh, do quite enough prep work on this side looks pretty ugly there's a huge gap there and up there is just three layers of trash but she should be good rated for 100 mile an hour off-road guaranteed Take her on the Baja 1000. Come inspect it out, Duff. He's already heading for the door, hitting the button. He knows good enough, right? Oh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, steering box on thaws too, right? What's sitting on its own weight? You got the old uh, Carolina lean? Yeah, I was just going to tell you that your truck looks like it's broke. You know, it's supposed to be riding like this, but, but yours is riding like that. Oh, no, silly goose. It's not broken. It's squatted. Is that what we're calling that these days still? The Pot County Squat? We got to figure out how to make the front roll, and then we can adjust the back here. So she's really sagging because the torsion bars are what holds these suspensions up. So once we get the front end figured out, then we can adjust the rear end. I got a really brilliant idea for that. I'm pretty sure you know what it is. So I drug in another 88 to 94 four-wheel drive wheel. We're gonna see if we can't adapt that to this 10 lug bud. Duff's checking her out right now. He says ah, it's gonna be tight, but give her a shot. How do those welds look up there? Good, he says, real good. All right, let's uh, get one of these wheels off and see if that wheel will even clear the brake drums. This thing's got ginormous Brembo brakes on it right now. Factory tow option. Golden. But she thought I was gonna drill some holes in that wheel. Oh no, we're doing something even dumber. We're gonna cut the center out of that wheel, cut the center of this wheel, weld them perfectly centered, or something like that. But what I wanted to do there was just make sure it's gonna clear the brakes. And it is. Barely, because that's like a 13 inch brake or something, 14, I don't know. She's big! Far enough. 
perfect. Man, you can just weld it into the hub like that. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I like the cooler runs. Excellent. We just gotta cut the center out of that and weld them together. Just that easy, right? Love it when I put it Chop suey. And we just gotta clean up the old rim, the new, the new old rim, and the old new center, and uh, get them all trued up. Real good. Man, if I had a big enough center, I could throw that on my wheel balancer and I could show you just how true we're gonna get it. But I think I got like a six inch is the biggest center, and that thing's like a eight. You gonna come check her out, Duff? See how my work is. Top quality as usual. <laughs> Barely even warped it. It's almost too big. I have to open that one up a little bit more. Oh yeah, I think we can weld that. Definitely. This is the dumbest thing we've done all day, isn't it, Doc? Let's do a test fit for me. Really burn it in good. I kind of like the way it looks. Other than the white letters being out, that's just dumb. Pretty sure the center of this hub weighs more than the rest of the ribbon tire. Oh yeah, it's gonna be real good. It's not very true at all. But it's awesome. Let's finish burning her in. I just put her on there so that now I have myself a uh, rotating weld jig. How neat is that? I don't know why, but I think that thing uh, looks cuter than a bug's ear. She's like uh, three quarter inches out around. Let me go find another rim. I know there is one, it just happens to be frozen to the ground, of course. No, because this one's flat and got snow on it, but I think it's more true. I spent a lot more time getting this one just right. These 245 16s just don't fill out the wheel well like those 20s do. What do you think, Duff? Yeah, I agree. Looks like a dog dragging its butts all across the grass. So, uh, Carolina Lean, not cool. Now that we got the front set, Let's see if we can't bring the back end up so it. I feel like we're not gonna go high enough to get her level, but maybe, maybe. Let's adjust that now, see what we can get. Right, duffel up, I guess? Yeah. It's too cold to be dragging butts across the ground out there. Oh, well, that's about all we're gonna get. Is he gonna steer? Oh, we got steering again. Nice. You know, that's uh, pretty dang close to level. So now, oh, this is gonna be easy. We just weld the upper control arm right to that bump stop. You got all the great ideas, Duff. Take a bow. Don't mind if I do, he says. All right, I'm gonna 
clean that up just a hair. Maybe. Burn her in. This is definitely structural, so you're gonna to wanna to crank the uh, old Miller 200 up to 11. Oh yeah, nice fat bead, that ain't going nowhere. I would guarantee this for the Baja 1000, you know, 1000 miles at 100 mile an hour, but I don't think anybody's brave enough to drive this short wheelbase rough riding thing 10 miles an hour, so good enough. I don't want these wheels just flopping around out here, so we're gonna get those set straight. And then uh, we're gonna try to figure out a way to lock those in place. I have a good idea on that. Something will come to me though. Otherwise, I'll uh, ask my assistant wherever he's napping at. He's hanging out somewhere so we don't get welder splash. He's a smart pup. So here's what the duff come up with. We measured about nine and a quarter inches from the inside of the tire to the frame rail, both sides. So it should be pointing as straight as the frame is to that frame. So plus or minus 18 degrees. And then you come up with this. I thought about just cutting the tie rods and then just laying them down on the lower control arm and welding them in, but that's hard to get at and they're greasy. So we just took this chunk of C channel that I can't get off here, reamed out that hole, slide that over to the steering box input. I'll we'll just burn that on there, burn her to the frame rail. If the steering box can't turn, the wheels can't turn. Brilliant. I mean, they can rotate, they just can't turn. You know what I mean? So we're gonna burn that in there. I'm gonna set her on the ground. This thing's gonna be mean. Somebody's gonna get mad that I ruined that steering box, but as you can see, she's been leaking for a while, and it's been drinking a whole bunch of water for the last year that it's been apart, because it was last Christmas that I cut this pickup up. So we're not wasting anything here. Uh, not that these pickups are obsolete, but I think you could probably buy a rebuilt box for less than 200 bucks, so why are you gonna? Mess around with one of these. As a matter of fact, there's one right now that's leaking on uh, the black 92 that we gotta try to rebuild. So these ones are different. And this one's a leaker as well. All right, let's get this thing on the ground. Oh yeah, let's give her the old jump test. Jump around. Oh, she's solid. Not going anywhere. Steering. Just what plays in the uh, tie rod end. In the idler arm. In the pitman arm. Whatever. It's fine. Good enough for the girls we go with. Check it out, Duff. What do you think? Should we get it running? If all else fails, we just put an engine back here. And really have ballast for doing wheelies, you know, because we got pinion right here, and with another engine back here. Oh, the gears are turning. This could be something great. All right, let's see if that wide block is going to work. Want to come get the hood? No? All right, I'm doing it myself. Well, now you're going to come do it? All right, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, I know. Those uh, cab over hoods, plus 53 to 56 Ford hoods are a little tricky, so. What do we have here? Now you know it's a Y block, because it's got the stupid crossover pipe. 54, first year, so 239, maybe a 272. Let's check the dipstick. Oh my goodness, it's right at the full mark. So that's a uh, positive sign. Looks like they lay the coil on its side. Air cleaner's there. Upper radiator hose is uh, formed, nice. Coolant is not present. Yeah, Duff could have told you that. I'll be eating my glove. Oh, look at that goodness. Flexi hose, yay. Yay! It's got that little tiny two barrel and a fancy air cleaner. At least it's there. And uh, it's not over full on oil, so maybe it didn't dink too much. Does have the canister type oil filter and the big old road draft tube. Well, oh, 
she's a Tesla version. Wow, that's a nice one. 70 plates, so maybe 71 or two. So we'll say 50 years this thing's been off the road. Let's see if she turns over. Any bets, Doc? All right, here we go. Oh, belt's left. Get some leverage up in here. Oh, of course. I can't remember if on these, if we can get on the ring gear, the flywheel and turn them or not. I'll have to take a peek. Silly wide locks. Never mind the hissing of that tire that we just mounted on a rim, whatever. We're gonna have to dismount that, put a tube in it. Oh man, our Tesla block heater came unplugged. Good old external oil pump on the Y block. There's that inspection cover. Look at this though. She's full of mouse house and rotted through. So that ain't a good sign for a clutch anyway. We can't rock it because we don't have a rear diff. Oh my gosh, this thing must have been so fast though. It's got two red spark plug wires on this side. H10 champions. Oh yeah, nothing but the finest. I'm sure that starter's good too. Oh, here's our missing plug wire. Now she'll fire right up. I can't stand listening to that tire hiss and I can't stand flat tires, so I'm gonna go fix that quick. generations of files have been in there. Puh. Icky. Why did that seem like a good spot to build a house? Alright, let's go get a bar and put on there. And wait for the disappointment that ensues. Freaking wide blocks. What in the Sam Hill? Oh, it's a petrified little fievel. Oh, that's his cute little tail. He's a sleepy mouse. Oh, of course the bar has to line up perfectly with the drag link. Where's the rest of it at? Guess the old size 11 and a half rock rooster was too much for the old snap on A144 to handle. Guys, this thing is stuck. She's real stuck. I could mess around with it some more, but we're already out the only snap on tool we got around here. What are the odds we can get a snap on? rape van to stop by and warranty this. They probably don't make them anymore, so it's obsolete. We're not gonna be able to get one. Anyhow, yeah. Even if we did get this thing loose, uh, we know what happens when we get Y blocks loose and try to get them to crank over. They don't have any compression. So, kinda had some hopes for this one, since so he's not an air cleaner, but 
I might play with it a little bit more, stick a different bar in there, see, try prying on it, but I'm not gonna spend much more time on it. I think, I think this one's a lost cause, so. But it is freaking neat. This thing's been in here for a few days, been doing other projects. That uh, back end part's pretty neat. Duff thinks it's cool. I really dig the old stubby bob short wheelbase look. And then we got to thinking, you know, if we stick a couple of pieces of C-channel at the back there and put some worthless engine and transmission out back, hook it up to that differential, we could have our own stubby bob wheelie machine for like little or nothing because this is all just scrap iron we had laying around. We could pull the Y block out for uh, ballast on the back or less weight on the front. And we could see how my welds hold up on them wheels. But yeah, I just really wanted to make this thing roll and felt bad uh, about uh, giving you guys some video footage of it. So here we are. If you want to own this thing, got a title for it. Price is down below in the description. Could be yours. You could build your own stubby bob. Don't tempt me to do it. It rolls, it steers, and it's got a stuck wide block. So I think that's going to wrap it for uh, this episode. Duff is not impressed. He didn't get to go for a ride. So remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Breaking tools. Sometimes it's fun. It's usually expensive. I know. Struck out on the cab overs. Maybe one day we'll get one to run. Still looking for an engine turning tool sponsor.